Another blood disease affecting children is leukemia. Leukemia is a type of cancer that affects the blood-forming organs of the body, resulting in a proliferation of immature white blood cells. It is the most commonly occurring cancer in children and is actually a broad term for a diverse group of chronic and acute malignancies. Early in the course of chronic leukemia, the abnormal blood cells can still function and the child might not have any symptoms, but the problems appear as the number of leukemia cells in the blood rise. With acute leukemia, the blood cells are very abnormal and cannot function normally. The number of abnormal cells increases rapidly and symptoms develop and worsen very quickly. Who is at risk for leukemia? Risk factors include exposure to very high levels of radiation, as caused by the atomic bomb explosions during World War II and nuclear power plant accidents such as Chernobyl incident, chemical exposure such as to benzene and formaldehyde, chemotherapy, Down syndrome, and certain other genetic diseases, human T-cell leukemia, virus 1, which causes a rare type of chronic lymphocytic leukemia known as human T-cell leukemia and myelodysplastic syndrome, which increases the risk of acute myeloid leukemia. Remember that most children who have known risk factors do not get leukemia, and many who do get the disease have none of these risk factors. What about the common signs and symptoms of leukemia? They are fevers or night sweats, frequent infections, weakness and fatigue, pallor and bleeding, and bruising easily, as manifested by bleeding gums, purplish patches in the skin, or tiny red spots under the skin. There may be pain in the bones or joints, hepatosplenomegaly, abdominal pain, and constipation. Swollen lymph nodes, especially in the neck or axillary, are common, as are weight loss, headache, lethargy, stiff neck, and irritability. There may be vomiting and anorexia, an unsteady gait, a low platelet count, and a white blood cell count above 100,000. Other symptoms of acute leukemia are confusion, loss of muscle control, and seizures. Leukemia cells can also collect in the testicles and cause swelling. Leukemia also can affect the kidney, lungs, GI tract, and other parts of the body. Of course, these are not definitive signs of leukemia. An infection or another problem also could cause these symptoms. Diagnosis begins with a physical exam, including information about the child's personal and family medical history. The healthcare provider will check for hepatosplenomegaly, lymphadenopathy, and order a CBC and platelets. There may be a biopsy, during which a bone marrow sample is extracted from the hip bone or another large bone and the sample examined for the presence of cancer cells. A biopsy is the only sure way to know whether leukemia cells are in the bone marrow. Other tests include cytogenics, where chromosomes of cells are examined from samples of peripheral blood, bone marrow, lymph nodes, or cerebral spinal fluid. Chest x-rays are done to check for signs of disease in the chest. Depending on the type and extent of the disease, medical treatment consists of one or a combination of chemotherapy, biological therapy, radiation therapy, and bone marrow transplantation. The goal of treatment is to bring about a remission. Then when signs and symptoms disappear, additional therapy, called maintenance therapy, is given to prevent relapses. Most children with leukemia receive chemotherapy to kill leukemia cells. Depending on the type of leukemia, a child may be given a single drug or a combination of two or more drugs. Chemotherapy drugs are administered by mouth, by injection directly into peripheral IV site, through a central catheter avoiding the need for many injections, which can cause discomfort and injure veins and skin, or by injection directly into the cerebral spinal fluid. That last route is called intrathecal therapy, used because drugs given by IV injection or taken by mouth often do not reach cells in the brain and spinal cord due to the blood-brain barrier. For children, this type of treatment is administered through a special catheter called a Maya reservoir placed under the scalp. The physician injects the anti-cancer drugs into the catheter, avoiding the discomfort of injections into the spinal canal. Chemotherapy is administered in cycles, a treatment period, then a recovery period, and then another treatment period. The child might have chemotherapy as an outpatient at a hospital, at a physician's office, or at home. However, depending on which drugs are given and the child's general health, a hospital stay might be necessary. Radiation therapy uses high-energy rays to kill leukemia cells. The radiation is directed at the spleen, the brain, or other parts of the body where leukemia cells have collected. Some children receive radiation that is directed to the whole body, 
often given before bone marrow transplant. Radiation therapy is administered at a hospital or clinic. A stem cell transplant allows a child to be treated with high doses of drugs, radiation, or both that will destroy both leukemia cells and normal blood cells in the bone marrow. Later, the child receives healthy stem cells through central line and new blood cells developed from the transplanted stem cells. There are several types of stem cell transplantation. Bone marrow transplantation, when the stem cells originate in the bone marrow. Peripheral stem cell transplantation, with the stem cells coming from peripheral blood. And umbilical cord transplantation, with the stem cells originating from umbilical cord blood. Stem cells may come from the child or from a donor. Autologous transplant uses the child's own stem cells. The stem cells are removed from the child, frozen, and stored. The cells may be treated to kill any leukemia cells present. Following high-dose chemotherapy or radiation therapy, the stored stem cells are thawed and returned to the child. Allogenic transplant uses healthy stem cells from a donor, such as the child's brother, sister, or parent. Sometimes the stem cells come from an unrelated donor whose cells match the child's cells. Syngenic transplant uses the stem cells from the child's healthy identical twin. Children usually stay in the hospital for several weeks following a stem cell transplant. The healthcare team protects them from infection until the transplanted stem cells begin to produce enough white blood cells. The side effects of chemotherapy vary with the specific drugs and the dose. In general, anti-cancer drugs affect cells that divide rapidly, especially leukemia cells. Chemotherapy can also affect other rapidly dividing cells, like those that fight infection, help the blood to clot, and carry oxygen to all parts of the body. So children with leukemia are at risk for infections, may bruise or bleed easily, and may feel very weak and tired. Chemotherapy can affect cells in the hair roots and lead to hair loss. The hair grows back, but the new hair might be somewhat different in color and texture. It can also affect the cells that line the digestive tract. Chemotherapy can cause mouth and lip sores, nausea and vomiting, diarrhea, and poor appetite. Many of these side effects can be controlled with drugs. Some anti-cancer drugs can affect fertility. While most children treated for leukemia appear to have normal fertility when they mature, depending on the drugs and doses used and the age of the child, some boys and girls may be infertile when they reach adulthood. The side effects of biological therapy differ with the types of substances used and from child to child. Rashes and swelling, where the biological therapy is injected, are common. Flu-like symptoms might also develop. The healthcare team will monitor the blood for signs of anemia and other problems. Radiation therapy can cause increasing fatigue as treatment continues. Adequate rest is essential, but it is also important for the children to try to stay as active as possible. In addition, with radiation therapy, it is common for the skin to become red, dry, and tender in the treated area. Other side effects vary with the area of the body that is treated. If chemotherapy is given at the same time, the side effects may be even worse. Children who have stem cell transplantation have an increased risk of infection, bleeding, and other side effects related to the large doses of chemotherapy and radiation they receive. Graft versus host disease may develop in children who receive stem cells from a donor's bone marrow. The donated stem cells react against the child's own tissues, most often affecting the liver, skin, or digestive tract. This reaction can be mild or very severe. It can occur at any time after the transplant, even years later. Your nursing care concerns are related to the mode of treatment. Nursing care is focused on preparing the child for diagnostic and surgical procedures, teaching the child and family about the expected side effects of treatment, and child and family support. Be aware of the developmental and psychological needs related to each stage of life. You might also be involved in the administration of chemotherapy agents and managing the effects of radiation and chemotherapy. The child may require sedation during radiation. Vomiting can be alleviated by antiemetics and dietary changes. Pain management is an important concern, and you can intervene with non-pharmacological techniques such as relaxation or imagery, along with giving analgesics as prescribed. Other nursing care concerns are fluid and electrolyte balance, nutrition status and support, skin integrity, especially oral care, promotion of regular elimination, and protection against infection. The most common long-term side effect of treatment is debilitating fatigue that can persist for as long as a year after treatment. Your goals are that the child will receive appropriate primary health care, 
the child and family will be prepared for diagnostic and therapeutic procedures, and that the child will experience minimal complications and side effects related to the specific therapy. Keep in mind myelosuppression and the risk for infection, anemia, and bleeding. You'll monitor for drug and irradiation toxicity and toxic side effects like nausea and vomiting, anorexia, and mucosal ulcerations. And you'll be sure that child and family receive adequate education and support. Because children with leukemia get infections very easily, you'll administer antibiotics and other drugs as prescribed to help protect them from infections. In the hospital, the child may be in protective isolation. You'd advise the family to stay away from crowds and from people who have colds and other communicable diseases. If the child develops an infection, it quickly becomes very serious and must be treated promptly. It is important to teach the child and family to recognize early signs of infection. Anemia and bleeding are other problems that often require supportive care, such as transfusions of red blood cells. Platelet transfusions can help reduce the risk of serious bleeding. Medication to enhance the production of red blood cells might also be prescribed. Leukemia and chemotherapy can make the child's mouth sensitive, easily infected, and likely to bleed. The child should have a complete dental exam and, if possible, undergo needed dental care before chemotherapy begins. Teaching should include information about keeping the mouth clean and healthy during treatment. You'd offer oral care frequently using a soft toothbrush and alcohol-free mouthwash. Children who have leukemia must take in enough calories and protein to maintain an appropriate weight. Good nutrition will help them feel better and have more energy. However, eating well can be difficult. A child may not feel like eating if uncomfortable or tired. Also, the side effects of treatment, such as poor appetite, nausea, or vomiting, can affect nutritional status, so antiemetic medications are often prescribed. Follow-up care is an important part of the overall plan of care. Regular checkups ensure that any changes in health are noted and that problems are found and treated as soon as possible. Checkups include a careful physical exam, blood tests, x-rays, bone marrow aspiration, and spinal tap. Your discharge teaching will include information about the follow-up plan, such as how often the child must visit the physician and what tests will be done.